Hello once again, Star Wars Unboxing fans. Welcome to another episode of Darth Tupa's Star Wars Unboxing Show, Shelf Talk. And today I'm kind of continuing with our bookcase um, kind of media rack that I want to share with you. I believe in the last episode that we did this particular shelf, we talked about the top two. Um, I don't remember if we did this this one. But I'm going to kind of glance over this one again, okay, just because there's not much on this shelf. I did some rearranging, okay, so I think that's why I'm getting confused where I'm like, what did we go about with this? But I know, I just kind of consolidated and had a lot of stuff put up top. But essentially what we're dealing with here is a lot of Easter egg kits. We have a bunch of them here, about five or six. Um, we have a couple of books. We have the Star Wars trilogy, of course. We have the Nitpicker's Guide to the Star Trek Next Generation Universe. Yes, I am a Star Trek fan as well. I don't do a lot of collecting with Star Trek, but there's some of it. Uh, we have, the in previous episodes, we've had uh, the buildable wooden model kits, which we've done all of these, the R2, X-Wing, and Falcon. We have the Rogue One Catalyst book, which is uh, an awesome read. Uh, there's also a TIE Fighter book for the buildable wooden things. The Princess Diarist. We have a whole bunch of DVDs, some short... Uh, fan films, Ewok droids. I know we went over those, and we have a button. These are kind of the books that I have kept in our um, collection, just because I really feel like when it comes to books, I'm not a huge collector of books. I know there are people that like to collect like every printing of Star Wars, everything like that, and that's really awesome. I do not do that. Instead, uh, I do try to keep books on hand that are uh, that I feel have a read a re read re readability quality to them. So that's kind of where we are with that. So some of the books I have here are um, the Han Solo Adventures, the um, Journal of the Making of the Empire Strikes Back, the Lando Calrissian Adventures. There's three separate books there. Skywalking, the Life and Films of George Lucas, his first auto, or his first biography. The Tales from series, Tales from the Cantina, Tales from the Empire, Tales from Bounty Hunters, and Tales from Jabba's Palace. And then I have a whole series of uh, TV guides, which I have shown in the past. We're going to focus mainly on this third shelf down, because I haven't done anything new with that. And uh, there's a, as you can see, there's a lot of literature, so why don't we get right to it. We're going to start off by one of the first books that I ever collected, um, one of the first big coffee table books, and that is this one. It's The Industrial Light and Magic, The Art of Special Effects, written by uh, Thomas J. Smith and with an intro by George Lucas. Phenomenal book filled with awesome uh, photos and you know, imagery from not just Star Wars, but uh, all of the Lucasfilm uh, projects leading up to the production of this book, which I will say is, hmm, does it say? What does it want to say? Um, oh, here it is. Uh, 1986. So, still, you know, I mean, think about it, 1986. Think about the films that have come out from 1986 to now. That's like a 32, 33 year span beyond this book. So it's kind of cool. But this kind of shows its, its heyday. So that's really cool. All right. We also have one of the making of uh, uh, the J.W. Rinsler making of books, making of Star Wars. I also have making of Empire. And I do believe I have making, making of Jedi I have as a digital book, which if you get an opportunity, these books are awesome books, but get the digital copies as well. Because the digital copies that you can read on your iPad or on Kindles or things like that, they actually include some sound clips. They include more photos that you can kind of swipe through. They include um, some video clips. So that's a pretty cool thing. So the making of this, another kind of a definitive for the Star Wars fan um, collectible book. Um, we also have, now of course, we have the uh, a lot of the Stephen J. Sansweet, who is uh, my Yoda uh, when it comes to Star Wars collecting, and these books are amazing. They this is the Star Wars scrapbook, as you can see. What this is kind of a trend that was going on about 20 years ago with collectible books that included kind of pull out um, interesting parts of it. It wasn't just a book that you'd see pictures of things. It would be, for example, like here's a here's a production photo. You know, they have some some articles and things of that nature. But here's an example. Like this is a, a Star Wars, um, this is actually designed, this is a punch out mask, okay? But you can actually cut this out and attach it if you wanted to, okay? Here's a copy of that early bird kit. They're really like high res. Here's an example of the um, Bantha tracks, 
the, or the star, the official Star Wars fan club, and it's actually a, you know, you can actually open it up like an like an actual, the way they were. Like so, it's a really really nice printed copy, and if you go through this, you'll see that there's a whole ton of things that you can like pull out. Here's like an actual from a cereal box, a punch out and make um, X-wing fighter. So you can or you can actually do a lot with this. So you can probably find all these books. I would, I would I would estimate that many of them are out of print now, um, but you can probably find them on eBay or you know, uh, on Amazon from uh, you know twice from re from book resellers. So really really good one. Star Wars scrapbook Stephen J. Sansweet. Um, speaking of Stephen J. Sansweet, another one. Star Wars from concept to screen to collectible, which kind of deals with the story along with some of the props, many of which are owned by Stephen James Hansby, owned by the Branch of Obi-Wan Collection. So another great book there. Um, yeah, I actually bought two of the scrapbooks because one of them I used to take, actually take out some of the stuff that you can do and punch it out, and the other one I kind of kept um, full and un, un, unpunched. It's probably one of my only book collection. Of course, randomly put in there, we have the Star Wars. This looks like the re-release. Obviously, you've got Han talking to Jabba from A New Hope, so this is definitely the uh, special edition. But a nice pull-out poster book, which are really just like 8.5 by 11 shots. But, you know, there's some cool stuff. Schoolastic put those out. Probably something that, um, you know, my wife might have found at the book, but the bookmobile, uh, you know, everybody remember the bookmobile when a... When, you know, she works in elementary school and the bookmobile would show up and that was like the best day ever because kids would bring their money and buy books at the bookmobile. Well, that's the kind of stuff that you can buy there too. We have the Ultimate Visual Guide. Um, special edition, Ryder Wyndham. Okay, um, these are, you know, just great. These are great resources for um, photos, particularly when doing cosplaying or anything. But this is kind of like an Ultimate Visual Guide, which there's one problem I have with Ultimate Visual Guides. Star Wars is getting bigger than any book can show. So I don't really think this is Star. You know, this they, you know the first thing you see in this is a picture from Attack of the Clones, right? So there's a lot of different things. So these ultimate visual guides, I mean, they're all they all have really cool photos. They're great for photo reference. That's a great thing. A lot of cosplayers use them. Um, there's another one. Oh, was that the same one? Oh yeah, here's the Ultimate Visual Guide, and here's the Ultimate Visual Guide Special Edition. So, you know, again, these are some books that I have collected over the years. Some of them have been gifted to me, so I don't always keep track of it. That's one of the reasons why I have this. All right, the trifecta. We've got, they're out of, they're out of order, but that's all right. The complete, the art of Star Wars, the art of Return of the Jedi, which is essentially um, art by Ralph McQuarrie, along with maybe Joe Johnston, and... Uh, some imagery, great. Unfortunately, these books, the binding on them are going, so you have to be careful if you do get these books used, the binding does tend to fade after a while. The Art of Star Wars, including the complete script. And again, pretty much all this art is Ralph Macquarie. Some great Macquarie art, and The Art of the Empire Strikes Back. Again, does this have the script? No, this one doesn't come with the script. Yeah, for some reason, Star Wars and Jedi came with the scripts, but not Empire, so. Okay, some more um, great uh, visual dictionaries. Okay, we've got Attack of the Clones, Revenge of the Sith, the Star Wars the Visual Dictionary, Episode One, Phantom Menace the Visual Dictionary. Okay, uh, I'm trying to think if I see any. I don't have any others there. There might be a few more that they've come up with. I think I do have somewhere um, Last Jedi and. Um, Force Awakens upstairs. We have the Episode 1 Phantom Menace Art of Books. I love Art of Books. Probably because my daughter's an artist, so I know how much work goes into any kind of art book. So that's really cool. This came out a few years ago. You can draw. Again, daughter's an artist, so. But, you know, I've, I've had, I've dabbled in art in my years, in my youth. Um, so I liked getting, there's an, there's an old one that, that came out. I don't know if I have it here. Oh, yeah. I think I do. Yeah, I'll show you that in a minute. So I dabbled in drawing myself, but these you can draw books are pretty cool. And 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 this one, the newer ones come out have some really neat things. They have like like tracing paper kind of things, and just to show you rough draft pencil drawings and that kind of thing. So it's a it's a pretty cool uh, concept to have. 
We have the making of Star Wars Revenge of the Sith by J.W. Rinsler. Okay, this is kind of like a, you know, beat by beat, log by log, a, almost like a diary of the making of the movies. Star Wars The Clone Wars Visual Guide. Now, the only problem with this one is that The Clone Wars is a cartoon. It's all rendered as 3D animation. So to have a visual guide kind of feels weird, but it's, it, you know, but because you're not really dealing with any realist, real props. So the visual guides that you saw from episode one, episode two, episode three, they were either taking props from the movie and they were photo, 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 photographing them, or they were actually making props specifically for the book. Like if, if say, for example, Obi-Wan Kenobi was going to have some type of a food pack on his belt, they would kind of photograph that, even if you've never even seen it, even if you've never even had it on him, even if the actor didn't have it on him in the scene, they kind of made what he would have had. So that's kind of cool. And the art of, a lot of the art of books, I'm glad I'm taking these off the shelf, I'm going to put them in in order. So the art of Attack of the Clones. Okay, ooh, my books have become a little... Now, okay, so now we're going to, I'm going to kind of go out of order here just to show you. Now this one I actually picked up, limited first edition, the art of, um, or sorry, The Making of Phantom Menace. This is actually, I believe, an, uh, a, I don't want to say it's an un, it's either an unofficial guide, uh, or an bootleg, or something that was made in Europe, because I bought it in England, uh, and it's, you know, it even says here, you can see, 14.99 pounds, so, um, but it just had some pretty cool, like, you know, I, I've taken, like, you know, my, in my, my professional job, I, I'm a band director and I've taken our band to Europe a few times. So every time I'm in Europe, I try to find something in Europe, in the bookstore, toy store, anything that's uh, Star Wars related, just that, that you can't always get here. So this book I was able to find there, but not in this country. So, uh, maybe people that might be from the UK or maybe, maybe some people want to leave comments of things that they found in other countries, um, that you can't find in the U.S., but that's really cool. And, you know, there's a lot of episode one making of and art of books. So I've picked up a few of those. Um, okay, so now we're getting into some older stuff here. I want to show you this one. This is a great one. This is uh, How to Draw Star Wars Heroes, Creatures, uh, Spaceships, and Other Fantastic Things. And it's really just a, a kind of a step-by-step -step guide. But it does come in really handy as a guide. And this came out, I think, in 1983. This came out because it has all the Return of the Jedi characters in it. So that's a really cool one you can find. Um, of course, we've got our... Uh, <laughs> I picked this up in a flea market for $3. The Return of the Jedi storybook based on the movie. Uh, it's actually... It feels like the covering is from a... I can tell that it's from a library. But um, I got this book when I was younger. I read it cover to cover, and I dog-eared it. And my favorite thing about it was that you opened it up, came out weeks before the movie, you saw Wicket, you were like, what? You saw Jabba. You were like, what? And then, here's my favorite part. As you go through this, and you see everything, and then... Oh, come on, there it is. You see that. It was a spoiler, but it was an awesome spoiler. You see that Luke Skywalker has a green lightsaber, and that was so epic. Now, it would have been nice to see that for the first time on the screen, but it was still cool there. Okay, we got the, uh, the of course, the Return of the Jedi sticker album. This one I love, but it's, it's, I, I, this is what they call, um, the Empire Strikes Back mix and match storybook. So you actually do it like this, and it's like, you know, R2-D2 was hiding behind a rock on the Tatooine Desert when a Jabba came along and vacuumed him into a sand crawler where old droids were stored. So it's basically like a, a follow-along kind of one-sentence story, but as you can see, each thing is a different thing, different character so and then each verb is a different thing and then you can kind of mix them up so let's mix up something here let's do i'm gonna go one and i'll turn this one two then i'll do three then i'll do one i'll leave the sand crawler and i'll go to here all right so so you can have these fun it's almost like mad libs you can see and it says yoda who now has furry legs was piloting on the Millennium Falcon on the Rebel base when a probot floated by and vacuumed him into a sand crawler where Ben Kenobi was waiting. And then as kids, you just used to laugh at the, the concept of that. 
Uh, so it's a really, really great thing. Unfortunately, you know, being that it's spiral bound, it's spiral bound so much in one direction that if you can see it's starting to come off, but I still love it. It's such a great thing and it's such a great part of my childhood, so I never got rid of that. Um, we also have here the Tomart's Price Guide to Star Wars Collectibles. Um, I am not very much, you know, I, I, I fully support the Steve Sand Suite method of telling people how much a, an item is worth. An item is worth what a collector is willing to pay. And, you know, yes, there are certainly, there are certainly things that, you know, somebody might pay, obviously for things that are very rare or things like, things that are, um, you know, like prop replicas or things, that, or, or, or original props or costumes from a movie. Yeah, of course they're going to be worth a lot. But these, but this book was really meant more as a photo guide for me to kind of use to see if there are things that I might be interested in collecting that I've never been able to find. Um, and that, you know that's really cool so and, and you know the prices yeah I and mean, this was good because this was when this was this is one of the reasons i bought it when this came out to see the different figures you know and the different types of you know the different types of variants and stuff just to kind of get an idea not so much to you know sell them for anything but really just to see what they're worth of course they've come up with multiple different types of those guides since then so all right we also have one of the punch out and make it books and i don't think i've done anything in this one um these are really cool they're just uh you know, you would cut out pieces and make like cardboard or, you know, paper cardstock versions of spaceships and that kind of thing. So that's kind of a cool collectible. Uh, this is my Disney Files magazine that should not be in there. So I'm going to move that someplace else. <laughs> this is, what else are we going to get? A few of these things we'll take out here. Now we get into just some random hodgepodge. We got some, we got an X-Wing comic book. And again, some of these things I probably will end up selling. Um, only because I don't know if I really want to keep every little thing and, you know, making room for it. Whoops. Uh, we have, oh, this is actually a greeting card that somebody gave me. A day long remembered. Birthday is actually signed by a bunch of my students. So I love, like, those kind of, a th those kind of things. Anything that I can get from, uh, you know, from my students or from family members. That means a lot more to me because it's a more personalized this is the Star Wars, I think it's like a general program that went out to uh, movies. Just kind of giving everybody an understanding of what the characters are and everything. So really cool piece there. All right, and now we get into just some, some random Star Wars uh, Insider magazines. I will tell you the Star Wars Insider magazine, it's a preview magazine. Um, I do collect a lot of magazine pieces. Whoops. And they're all falling. Here's Yoda's activity book. Here's a Rogue One kind of making of book. Here's a Star Wars stamp album. And Star Trek countdown. Oh my goodness. A Star Wars stamp album, just kind of a way to collect stamps, but kind of cool. And this came out in the, you know, this was a rarity that came out in the 70s. Uh, what is this? A Guide to the Galaxy. Oh, this is a, okay. This was a, from Rancho Obi-Wan. I'm um, not exactly sure what that is, but I think this came with part of a, collect, uh, a collector pack that I purchased there. And yeah, these are all like different Star Wars Insider magazines, Celebration magazines, okay? I, I will say, in all honesty, I am not a huge, um, I'm not someone who will reread old magazines, um, so often the times I will actually put all these on a, on eBay as, as a, you know, because I know there are a lot of magazine collectors out there, so the Star Wars Insider magazine is not something that I'm like, you know, glued to having, so, and of course we have this box here, which is partially full, but on top of the box we have... People ask me if I collect all things Star Wars, and I tell them, no, I don't. But I do kind of come across some things that I keep, like, you know, here's a, uh, here's a uh, pop secret with Yoda on it, <laughs> which I'm actually thinking I'm going to get rid of because I don't think it's that great. Uh, we have um, Honey Made. You know, I do, I do break, break up boxes and fold them up just because they, they, they store better yet, better that way. We've got a uh, C-3PO Campbell soup can. And these are pretty recent, you know. We've got some Cheerios box. I know that there are some that are really into cereal collected. There's a Star Wars cereal. 
Um, gotta be honest, I'm not a fan of the cereal. It was very, 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 very sugary. Um, that's some more Honey Made. Um, got some, some Honey Nut Cheerios, Lucky Charms. Here's one with more recent with Solo. So yeah, I have a bunch of uh, cereal boxes that I do collect. Um, you know, I, I don't know what I'm gonna do with them. I mean, I may display them. I may just decide to put them in a big book um, and just kind of have them there, you know. Um, in terms of my little box here, um, oh boy. Okay, this is a, oh, this is gonna take some time, but I'm just gonna just highlight some things. Most of these are, Star Wars Insider magazines, okay? Uh, and, and again, I'm not like, I'm, I'm probably gonna end up like selling them all in bulk because um, I'm probably never gonna read them again. Uh, they're not, they don't have a rereadable act, you know, feeling. In fact, it's funny, like magazine print articles are kind of, you know, they're losing their luster, I think. I think online, you know, like even when I get new, I mean, but nothing against the Star Wars Insider Magazine. It's a great publication. It has some awesome things in it. But when I first bought into it and I was first getting back when it was the Lucasfilm Fan Club Magazine, that's when I first started buying into them. The thing was is that back then there was no internet, okay? So this was your monthly or every other month information that you would get. Now, everything that they post is kind of already out. Like everything that they post is already like, a, like two weeks to a month late. So it's kind of a challenge to do that. But there are some other highlights here that I'll share. We've got the uh, Star Wars, a Star Wars um, special edition storybook. We've got the original Star Wars storybook. So this is like one of the first things to come out. That's really cool. The Star Wars pop-up book. I'm a big fan of pop-up books. Um, I kept a lot of these just for the posterity of it. The Darth Vader's activity book. I can't imagine Darth Vader having activities. Um, the Star Wars Trilogy Special Edition. Um, I guess the art of. So it's just like extra art from just the special edition stuff. Here's a Star Wars Iron-On Transfer. So you can actually put Iron-On Transfer. Speaking of Iron-On Transfer, this I want to comment on this shirt. Um, this is actually a shirt that obviously looks like the Yavin Metal. It's from Star Wars Action News, which if you're not listening to them, they are an awesome... Uh, podcast mainly although I do think they have a YouTube channel I don't listen to their I don't watch their YouTube channel as much and I don't listen to them as much as I used to but um, they are a great channel and a great source for primarily Star Wars collecting they are you know for everything I am multiply it by a hundred and that's kind of where they are they buy or at least they have maybe they might have scaled back a little bit since the Disney acquisition but they buy a lot of different you know Star Wars uh, related items and they buy them in bulk and they buy multiple versions of them so other ones we got the empire strikes back storybook we got the empire strikes back uh pop-up book some um a super marvel magazine star wars empire strikes back turn of the jedi special edition storybook we got the return of the jedi sketchbook this is an awesome one i actually had to buy this one twice because i bought it once in it when i was a kid and it got damaged and i couldn't open it anymore it got water damaged the Return of the Jedi Marvel comic books, another one, and a Heroes and Villains, Creatures and Droids book. You know, back then, pre-internet, we were starving for anything we could find that was, um, that, you know, related. Uh, now, just to give you an idea, most of these are Star Wars um, insider ones. And then, of course, you get into some... And it's, of course, it's the Lucasfilm fan club, which didn't just talk about Star Wars. It also talked about Indiana Jones. There's a characters from Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Um, and then Lucasfilm fan club, Anthony Daniels, Willow articles. I mean, they're kind of fun for posterity. So I don't know. I thought about keeping the Lucasfilm fan club ones just because they're so old. Uh, these are, oh, premiere Star Wars. Episode one, multiple covers. <laughs> yes, I will not lie. I got roped into the multiple covers of the same articles just to have all the different covers. I don't know why I did that, but I did that. Um, there was a Star Wars kids magazine. Hey, look who there it is. Everybody's favorite, Jar Jar. Anybody watch this channel? Know that I'm not a, I'm not a hater on Jar Jar. I just find it interesting how people 
have hated on Star Wars or hated on Jar Jar. But the, the, the kids magazine is kind of nice. Um, the Mad Star Wars Spectacular, which um, they actually came up, I don't know if I have it here, but they actually came up with an entire Mad Magazine tribute to all the comics that they did on Star Wars. Um, here's a couple of vintage official poster monthlies. Um, Entertainment Earth. Uh, multiple ones. This is a Smithsonian article that, I don't know why it's in a plastic bag because it's only partially there. How many of you remember, anybody my age, remember Dynamite? Dynamite Magazine. Hey, Crazy. So some interesting stuff here. You know, that's why I, I, I did already do an unload of a lot of articles, a lot of magazines related to Star Wars. I didn't unload all of them because some of them I do think are kind of nostalgic. Here's the Star Wars Technical Journal. Two of them. Three of them. Here's the best of Star Wars. Star Wars Kids again. And we're running down to the bottom here. And the Star Wars Compendi and Compendium. Special issue packed with in-depth articles. And we have this. The Newspaper of Science Fiction and Fantasy, which is all about Star Wars. I don't know exactly where that came from. There's another newspaper that had all about Episode One. It's like a whole cover page. Oh, this was the Return of the Jedi. Okay, this was, and best for last here. We got the Return of the Jedi press kit. Okay, this included photos with 16 stills. It included all this information about everything. And this is what they would send out to press junkets for all the information. And they would use that to help promote the film. And of course, you can't have that without having one from Star Wars press kit. Okay, so these are pretty valuable and uh, pretty cool stuff. They're not something that you see all the time. And then, last but not least, um, this was a revised fourth draft, fourth draft script. Probably a copy. Probably made up. I don't know. But the adventures, it was the first time I saw the adventures of Luke Starkiller as taken from the Journal of the Wills. So, um... You know, it's a script, but it was like a, a predated script. And again, I don't even know if this was totally fan-made. I have no idea. I mean, I probably could do some research and read up on the, the J.W. Rinsler making of Star Wars book, which they had a lot of scripts from the first couple of drafts, and see if these line up. But in any case, it's okay. I don't really mind. It's kind of fun to have. This is kind of a posterity of how many people were trying to come up with that. So this was a very lengthy video about what is on a shelf. But when you're dealing with media, you're dealing with, you know, book media, print media, there's a lot to talk about. So as you can see, I still have three more shelves to get to, which I will do eventually. Uh, we, we do have some more videos coming up where we're kind of devoting it to Disney with Galaxy's Edge coming and Galaxy's Edge getting ready to open up in Walt Disney World in Florida. So uh, in honor of that, we're just going to kind of revisit some of the things that you saw in uh, Disney when it comes to uh, pre-Galaxy's Edge in terms of what kind of products that they've had available. We already did kind of a walkthrough of the the current state of it be right before the land opens up to the public. So we're, now we're going to just kind of talk through and review a few. We've had some unboxings of some Disney Star Wars mashup characters and we're going to do some more of those. So thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, share, hit the notification button, hit the bell icon, all that kind of stuff. Check me out on Instagram and Twitter at Darth Tuba, Darth Tuba Star Wars unboxing page on Facebook. And leave comments or email me DarthTuba77 if you have an, or at gmail.com if you have any questions. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, may the force be with you.